Hi! Cell phones have become so advanced that I think most of us do not utilize them to their full potential. Most smartphones are packed with sensors. This one even has a sensor that measures magnetism in three dimensions at the same time. That's two more than most Gauss meters. Are we carrying a high-precision 3-axis Gauss meter for measuring magnets in our pockets? Let's find out! Be careful near strong neodymium magnets. They will bite your fingers at any given chance. In a previous video, I tested how well a smartphone will measure light in lumens and sound in decibels. It did surprisingly well, more than adequate for hobby use. I also noticed the phone has a magnetic sensor that measures on three axes at the same time. Nice! I only have one other device that can do that. A research-grade Tesla meter worth around seven times as much as the phone. I wonder how well the smartphone will work as a Gauss meter for measuring magnets compared to this lab workhorse. Only one way to find out. First up, I will remove the cover I use on the phone. For detecting if the cover is open or closed, it has a built-in magnet. Beautiful. The ring impression on the magnetic viewing film from a disc magnet reminds me of a solar eclipse. I think it is a potted shielded magnet, which is impressive inside a cover thinner than 3mm. Still, it looks like the magnet can offset the phone sensor by around 3 microtesla. Ok, 3 microtesla is nothing, but for max precision I am removing the cover and its magnet. What I can't remove are the magnets in the phone's speakers. At least they also look shielded. No surprise since all speaker magnets are at least half potted. Shielded speakers are fully potted. More details on speaker magnets in the video where I put a monster magnet near a subwoofer. Having magnets stuck near a magnetism sensor is far from ideal. But being shielded and static in relation to the sensor, I guess they compensated the readout from it. Next, I will set up the free app I have chosen to be more video friendly. Figure lines are easier to see on video. A hundred readings a second is a bit too much for this purpose. One time a second is more readable. And let's keep the screen on while recording. There we go. It is such a luxury to detect a magnetic field three-dimensionally. Reminds me of the time it helped me figure out how a magnetizer-demagnetizer tool works. Worth a rewatch. Let's repeat it with the free access phone. Um, not exactly the same experience when the probe is too big. I'm not even sure which of the two holes I am probing here. The phone is not off to a good start. There are magnets stuck near the sensor. The position of the sensor is not clear and the whole device is the probe, making it useless for tight spaces. But it still has a chance to measure unconfined magnets if I can find where the sensor is placed. Oddly enough, I can't find any information on the sensor and its placements for this model. I will have to figure it out myself. To be pinpoint accurate, I will use my smallest magnet, the one right there. Oh, it's so cute! <clears throat> Actually, I will use five of them to know the pole surface and for more grip. Alright, let's find the sensor. Does not seem to be on this side. Maybe the other. 
Oh, looks promising. Oh yes, getting warmer. I have to be precise here. Boom, found it. The readings look weird, but the sensor is around here. Weird looking graphs though. Uh oh, hold on. I removed the magnet, yet I'm still reading over 2000 microtesla. 50 times more than before the magnet was close to the sensor. Did I break it already? R refresh. Nearly 3000 now. It is getting worse. Let me try the classic resetting procedure for electronic compasses. Phew, that fixed it. Now I'm really curious to know exactly what sensor is used and its limitations. Luckily, the app will tell me the model number. This sensor is meant for measuring terrestrial magnetism, the magnetic field coming from the Earth itself. The sensor will max out at around 5000 microtesla. That's low, really low. My tiniest magnet will easily overload it a full 30 times. A puny fridge magnet, or even the rubber magnet holding the door airtight, will overload the phone sensor. That's disappointing. No chance to compare the precision of the phone and Tesla meter on any magnet then. For perspective, some of my strongest magnets go above 1 million microtesla, a full Tesla. No issue at all for the Tesla meter that will go to 35 million microtesla, even without switching probe. So no, the phone cannot be used as a gauss meter on the surface of a magnet. Bummer. However, the phone is designed to measure the strength and direction of the Earth's magnetic field, and that is a fascinating experience in itself. Check this out. To find the exact direction of the magnetic field, I first align the phone so the x-axis, the width of the phone, goes to zero microtesla. A zero reading means the axis is perpendicular to the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. And, in turn, that the y-axis, the length of the phone, is parallel to the field. In simple terms, the length of the phone is pointing north-south when x is zero. Like this. X is flickering around zero with the phone aligned north-south. The minus reading on the y-axis means the top is pointing south. Next, I will also align the z-axis, the thickness of the phone, perpendicularly to the direction of the field. Only when both the x and z-axis reach zero, we know the length of the phone is following the exact direction of the Earth's magnetic field. Let's see how high I need to lift the phone before that happens. Look at that. It still baffles me how the magnetic field is going into Earth, not along the surface, at my place. Why? Well, more details in an old video of mine. But I don't live near a magnetic pole at the top of the Earth. I live on top of a magnetic pole inside the Earth. The angle is somewhere around 69 degrees. Since the phone is a multi-tool, I can just ask it for its inclination. I will call it 69 and a quarter degrees. The field strength fluctuated around 51 or 53 microtesla. Can I verify this data with the Tesla meter? Hold on.
They are seriously close. Working in micro Teslas and fractions of degrees is not trivial for an amateur like me. There is, however, another way to verify these data. The Earth's magnetic field is mapped by professional scientists and published every five years. Here are the official measurements from December 2019. Link is in the description under the video. Inclination first. I live in central Denmark, where the inclination is 70.4 degrees. And the field strength? Roughly 50,500 nanotesla, or 50 and a half microtesla. Astonishing! The tesla meter is closer than the phone, but the phone is not in any way far off. Great results for a free access sensor so small it will fit inside this magnet. Twice! Including its electronics. Click like to honor that feat. After a short message, I will show you what this button does. A big, big thanks to all my patrons. Thank you so much for helping out. It's really appreciated and important for a niche channel with monthly quality uploads like mine. For just a dollar a month, you can help me out too and get full access to all my posts on patreon.com. Link to my Patreon page in the description. Thank you. Throughout the video, you may have noticed this button, 3D Compass. Let's see what it does. Well, that was easy. In 3D, a compass needle points almost vertically down into Earth, where I live. Only near equator will it be horizontal, like we are used to seeing with a normal one-axis compass. To conclude it all, a smartphone cannot replace a Gauss meter. It is simply too limited, especially in max field strength. Using it as a lux meter and sound level meter with free apps is more feasible. I have made a video about it for you to watch. And remember to subscribe for more if you like it. In any case, thanks for watching. Bye for now.